The Hex Angels came to my uncle's funeral. What's the nicest thing you've seen a gang do? My uncle told me this story. Many years ago, he was living in a place beside some Hell's Angels. My uncle is a big guy and rides bike too, but back then he was riding, I believe, a Honda bike. Cruiser type, not a crotch rocket. Anyways, he said the Hells Angels guys would come help him fix his bike if they saw him working on it. My uncle loves tinkering with his toys. I guess they would bust his chops a bit for not driving American-made, but they were just nice people and enjoyed helping slash working on bikes. He also said they had really good peanuts and would give him bags full of them all the time. Never understood that last part, but I guess they were in the peanut business. For laundering purposes, maybe? He still says they are the best neighbors he ever has had. Respectful, friendly, and kind. It should be noted that this all happened in Canada. Peanuts is another word for H. Your uncle did H. Joking. My biological father was a bandito and was kindly enough to bang my mom so that I could be given the gift of life. Heart of gold, that one. My mom got a flat tire years ago with three kids under the age of five in the car, mind you. It was the middle of summer and she had no cell phone. The typical bad-butt, long-bearded biker pulled over and changed the tire for her without a question. She tried to give him money, and his response was, Just tell everyone a warlock helped you out. Dude. The Westboro Baptist Church came to my town to protest President Obama's visit and to also claim that a massive tornado that killed 161 people in my town just a few days prior was deserved for whatever reasons. Luckily, hundreds of bikers and gangs and truckers blocked them in a gas station and nobody saw them that day. I was really afraid at the start that the Westboro Baptist Church was going to be their nicest gang they've ever seen. Thank heavens they were not. My uncle used to work with kids and teenagers in inner city Chicago. He helped start a soup kitchen for a school of kids in tough situations. He also used to do gang interventions, trying to get gangs to let a member out or leave someone alone, things like that. He was a Franciscan and always wore his robes when he went out at night or was expecting trouble. Gang members shot near him or above his head quite a bit, but they always deliberately missed. Other members of his community learned to always venture into dangerous territory in their robes because Chicago gang members just don't shoot Franciscan brothers or sisters. My husband and I tow a camper from Florida to Tennessee twice a year to camp in the Smokies. A good stopping point is an area called Locust Grove, Georgia. There's a cute overnight RV park close on I-75, and also the most kick-butt Mexican restaurant you'd never guess was in a strip mall where we like to grab a bite and a drink. One night we got in a little late and were finishing up dinner and watching the debut of Favre playing on the Jets on TV at the Mexican place. The game went to the half and the restaurant was closing up. We asked the waiter if he knew of any place we could catch the second half and he pointed us to some bar across the interstate. Off we go to a little nondescript place named The Grove, seated in front of your typical interstate motel. There were just a handful of cars in the lot, but it still looked open, so we headed in. The waiter was right. They were showing the game on a big TV, so we grabbed some stools and ordered some beers. I get kind of loud watching football, especially if I've had a few, so I let out a few hoots and hollers, and the waitress headed over to see if we want another round. I feel dumb at this point because I'm in a strange bar with locals being sort of loud, so I apologize to the waitress. She replied in the heaviest, sweetest Georgia drawl, Baby, you're in a biker bar, you be as noisy as you want, and then went off to get our beers. That's when we took a good look around, and our dumb butts realized we were in a real-life biker bar, like hardcore. We noticed a poker game in the back room, we see the biker flags hanging, we see the bikers at the bar in the shadows. Biker. Bar. Big time. But also, a good football game, cold beers, and what feels to be a fairly non-threatening laid-back environment. So we stayed. Late. Really late. And we get to know Cat the bartender and others seated at the bar who are all super nice. We got invited back any time during our travels. In fact, we learned many truckers stay in the parking lot of the Grove because it's convenient and they serve food. Cat told us we could park our rig there any time, which killed us. Our camper was now a rig, and to just call ahead and she'd have a hot meal waiting. She also said it's safer than the RV park because it's a biker bar, and no one will let you get fricked with if you're our guest. So we now hit the Grove every time we pass through on I-75 if we can. We learned in later visits that the gang whose bar it is are the Outlaws. They seem very nice. In fact, the last time we were there, they were hosting a charity event, a chili cook-off, I think, for kids. 
Too Long Didn't Read, Suburban Couple Stops in a Bar on the Way to Go Camping to See a Football Game, Finds Out It's a Very Friendly Biker Bar Belonging to the Outlaws, Goes Back Twice a Year to Say Hello and Have Beers. My mother-in-law was the lead nurse on the orthopedics ward. Every biker in town knew her, and she would stand up to any of them if they complained. She'd shame them by comparing them to other gangs. She used visiting privileges as a hammer to enforce strict neutrality and a no-colors policy. They respected her so much. One day she's driving to work and blows a tire. Total failure. Shredded. Who should pull up to help her but the Sons of Satan, as hardcore as bad-butt outlaw gangs as any in the country. They not only put on her spare, they escorted her to work, then repaired her bad tire and put it back on the car. She said being surrounded by dozens of bikers on the freeway acting as an escort was the loudest but most comforting feeling ever. She sounds like a pretty bad A woman. Kudos to her. And it was on that day that the biker gang chose their queen. Not the Hex Angels, but another motorcycle club that my uncle was a member of showed up with hundreds of people after he was killed in an accident, hit by a drunk driver while on his bike. The funeral home was about five miles from the cemetery, and I'm pretty sure that's how long the procession was. I ran the after-school program at an elementary school in a rough part of town. Our playground was actually a city park, which meant we couldn't do the maintenance on broken equipment, and I couldn't kick people out to make it safer for my kids. I had problems with some teen and 20-something D-heads drinking and finger-banging their meathead girlfriends while the kids were out playing, and goddammit, we didn't deserve to just stay inside because cops didn't patrol. My kids deserved to play. It was frustrating. One day, a couple gnarly old one-percenters approached me while we were outside, which scared me, and asked if I had been having trouble with the neighbors coming around. I told them that it had been pretty rough. One just clapped a hand on my back and said, You ain't gonna have that no more, and you ain't gonna have no more trouble from us. The next day, a biker was by the basketball court keeping watch while the kids played and left when we were done. That continued every day for the rest of the school year. Also, the guy who stood watch never smoked or cussed while the kids were out there. I don't condone their activity, but I appreciate their help. That is very cool. It's nice to hear that even rough bikers care to make sure children are all right and have a safe environment to play and enjoy themselves in. When I was in high school, I went on a double date to go see a movie. I don't remember which one. And when we came out of the theater, we realized that my friend who drove had locked his keys in the car. We spent an hour or so asking slash begging the cops that we saw in the parking lot to unlock the car for us, and every one of them turned us down. Then, seemingly out of nowhere, this gentleman appears, sees us looking in the window of our car, and asks if he can help us. We explain the situation. He says he can help. Within 15 seconds, our car is unlocked. Being amazed by high schoolers, we just stare in awe at what had happened. Then he left us with these parting words. Today is my first day out of prison. I was in for Grand Theft Auto. And off he walked. When I was younger, I lived in a relatively bad part of town. I was slash am Asian slash white, and most of my neighbors were black or Hispanic. I started playing sports at school and made friends with a number of kids, including this one guy named Thaddeus, who was two years older than me. Thaddeus was a big, tough kid, but a secret that he kept from a lot of people was that he sang like an angel. He told me once and sang R. Kelly's I Believe I Can Fly, and I've never heard it done better. I swore to him I would never tell a soul, and I never did. Thaddeus got involved in some gang activity later on, and I lost touch with him until high school. I was walking home late one night when I was approached by a group of black teenagers who apparently saw me as an easy mark. I wasn't sure whether I was going to get mugged or was going to get a butt kicking out of it too. I think my membership on the football team was the only thing that saved me from an immediate beatdown. But it wasn't going to end well. Suddenly, I hear a loud, Hey, the frick are you doing? Leave him alone! I look over, and Thaddeus and a couple older 20-plus guys are pushing into this circle. Thaddeus throws an arm around my shoulder and says, He's cool. You frick with CMXI, you frick with me. The teenagers dispersed, and Thaddeus made sure I was okay before sending me on my way. I was a bit shaken up at the time, so I wasn't until I reflected later that I realized that Thaddeus and all the older guys were pretty obviously strapped, and their status saved me from any trouble for the remainder of my time in high school. Thaddeus sounds like a boss. 
I would also agree. Thaddeus sounds like a pretty cool guy. However, I cannot get past the I was slash am Asian slash white. Was? What happened? Professor told us his story while we were on a field trip in Arkansas. He was giving a lesson in the Ozark Mountains at some outcrop on the side of the road when he heard a rumble coming down the road. Next thing he knew, there were about a hundred rough-and-tumble Hells Angels coming toward them. As they passed, he said the rumble was deafening. Finally, the whole crew passed them when he noticed that the leader of the pack called for a U-turn. As they made the U-turn, they approached the class going on and all the bikers brought their bikes to a stop. Not knowing what was going on, my professor asks if he can help them. The leader then proceeds to say that he saw something about geology on the History Channel and was wondering if he could sit in on the lecture my professor was giving. With a laugh, my professor obliged and looks back on it as the most rewarding lecture he's ever given. Perks of being a leader. Make 100 bikers sit through a lecture to satisfy your curiosity. Nobody says crap. My dad has been a biker since I was about 17. He loved riding on his BMW and always tinkering with one of them in the garage. While he never joined a gang, he was friendly enough to them when they came around to his local bar or when he saw them while on a ride with his buddies. Dad went on cross-country trips, mainly ending up in Wisconsin to visit friends. Fast forward to this past Christmas. My dad died on the 23rd and we were having his funeral. Mom insisted on him looking proper, though I was holding on to his biker vest. A bunch of bikers came in, a significant number from a gang, I was later told. Many rode in the Ohio cold on their bikes in his memory. One in particular came from Wisconsin just to give me a necklace Dad left him to fix up for me. I've had this necklace since I was a small child. Dad bought it for me. It broke when I was 14 and I hadn't seen it until he brought it back to me, fixed it up. Too long didn't read, an old biker came from Wisconsin to my dad's funeral and gave me a necklace my dad had fixed for him that I had since I was a child. These are the kind of things I like about bikers. Tough and scary, maybe. But you can be dang sure the majority of them will keep their word and they're easy to understand. Don't screw with them, they won't screw with you. Two Good Encounters with Bikies The father of a schoolmate was an angel. Despite being an enormous, scary, hairy bear of a man who was constantly covered in leather and stunk of oil and beer, he was a great guy. He always looked after his kids and their friends. When one of my friends got lost on the local moorland, he got some mates on buggies to go find him. The second one was more recently. I ride a crappy little 50cc scooter and was at the front of a bunch of cars trying to change lanes so I could turn off the major road I was in after a light change. Two bikies, not sure which gang, there are a ton local, saw me struggling with some butthole in a 4x4 not getting ahead or falling back so I could change lanes. These two bikies swung in front of him and forced an entire lane to slow down, then waved me in. A lot of those biker gangs can be great guys. They employ the same tactics old-time gangsters used. Treat the community well so they view you in a more positive light. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. The bike clubs around here are great. My niece was born with a rare condition and needed several surgeries that, of course, insurance wouldn't cover in the first few years of her life. We had to raise $100,000. The bike clubs came through every time. They are some of the nicest people in the world. Just this weekend, I went to a Nom Nights event, which raised over $10,000, I think, for children with cancer. They are some of the most caring and charitable people I have ever met. The Yakuza in Japan are known to help with the reconstruction every time there is a tsunami attack. Friendly Neighborhood Mafia when I was 15, someone slipped acid in my soda at a bar. My stepdad played in a skeezy southern rock cover band, so I spent a lot of time in bars with my parents, helping my mom run the soundboard. I don't remember much about what happened, but at some point a group of ghost riders gathered around me as I was in a corner rocking back and forth and carried me out to a car and took me home. They made me tea and brought me crackers and basically talked me through it until dawn. My parents stayed at the bar and worked. They just let these bikers take me home and take care of me. Two of them were convicted felons with violent offenses who had done many years in prison. I've seen and heard of plenty of gangs, bikers especially, doing good deeds, but the image of a bunch of big, burly, hairy dudes in leather brewing you a nice cup of Earl Grey really does it for me. Do you take it with one lump of sugar or two? Uh, actually, I prefer a little honey and milk. Hell yeah, you do. I didn't see this personally, but about 20 years ago, my mother was a fifth grade teacher in Compton. 
For those of you who don't know, Compton is pretty notorious when it comes to its concentration of gangs and gang violence, especially in the immigrant district, which is where she lived and taught. It was a pretty average night if you heard between one to ten gunshots. My mom, being the frickin' boss she is, refused to leave the district or teach anywhere else. Anyways, her first year teaching there, she had a group of five boys. All of them are living in destitute poverty. During break, they love to draw pictures of cars like Lamborghinis and Porsches, all things that they could never afford. They all promised my mom that if they ever got a car, she would be the first person that they would take for a ride. Skipping ahead about eight years, my mom was leaving the school late after staying to grade some tests. As she was walking to her car, she saw a shady group of boys leaning against a car watching her. She began to walk fast, but the boys got up and began walking towards her. All of them were wearing the telltale blue bandanas, Crips, and my mom said she could see one who was packing a Saturday night special. Anyways, just as she got to her car door, the group of boys reached her. One of them spoke in a deep, intimidating voice. Mrs., we're here to take you for a ride. My mom thought she was being kidnapped and reached for her pepper spray. Then another one of the group stepped forward and introduced themselves as the five boys that she taught about eight years ago. They squeezed my mom into the back seat of an old beat-up Cadillac between two of the students. They took her to a really fancy restaurant somewhere and paid for her meal in full. Later, they took her back to her car, dropped her off, and told her if she ever needed anything to call them. Then drove off. Too long didn't read, my mom went out to some fine dining with some Crip members. Apparently your mom is down with the Crips, that's basically the definition of street cred. I've never had a bad experience with the Angels. After they took over the local red light district, it became a much better place to party. They threw out those who won't behave, they made sure no one is selling bad drugs. Their bouncers are very respectful, drinks got cheaper, and rumor has it the prostitutes got better. This is something rarely pointed out. They make crime clean. They don't want extra attention from bad drugs or buttholes causing violence. Turn it into a sort of hamster dam. Huh. It's almost as though crime and gangs aren't inherently immoral. Interesting. Well, this isn't about a gang, but certainly a story about a bad butt thug. Where I went to school was pretty middle-class white. However, there was one part of town that was kind of rough as it butted up against the rougher town right next to us. There was a kid that went to my school that was a senior when I was a sophomore. He was honestly probably the biggest bad butt in my school. He was about 6'2", 240 pounds. He was all muscle, and in high school, he already had a body filled up with prison-style tattoos. I know he had spent some time in juvie. One day from a distance, I saw some other typical white thug kids kind of taunting a kid with obvious mental handicap issues. I couldn't quite tell what was going on, though. A few seconds later, I see the actual only bad butt I went to high school with come over and grab one of the guys, and I hear him tell the kid to go pick up his tricking cars. The kids kind of scramble, and I see they're picking up Hot Wheels all over the locker bay. He makes the kids apologize to the handicapped kid. They had been kicking his Hot Wheels around the locker bay while he tried to play with them. The mead kids leave, and I see the bad butt guys start talking with the kid about Hot Wheels cars. The rest of the school year, the bad butt kid would bring Hot Wheels in for the handicapped kid. They would trade Hot Wheels, talk about Hot Wheels, buy each other Hot Wheels, and even play with Hot Wheels on the lunch tables. He spent so much time hanging out with this kid and his Hot Wheels. It was one of the most bad butt things I have ever seen. This somehow restored my faith in humanity. In Stockholm, Sweden in 2007, a task force of highly trained officers from the Swedish military police was tasked with hunting down and incarcerating any and all known members of the Werewolf Legion, a gang responsible for most of the sea and cannabis trafficking in Sweden and Finland. My cousin Andres was an affiliate of theirs at the time, operating a rather large marijuana grow op in Berlin, Germany. Within a span of eight months, 16 known affiliates to the WL were imprisoned in Sweden on charges of drug trafficking, extortion, or murder, including Andres' stepbrother, Johan. Johan was being transported to a holding facility in Halmstad, and on the way, the police caravan was attacked by gang associates, believed to be part of the Ukrainian mafia. Three officers were killed in the attack, and one was shot in the throat. Instead of running while he had the chance, Johan ripped off his shirt and applied pressure to the wound on the officer's neck with it. He waited with the officer bleeding profusely from his throat until the paramedics and police arrived. He was later pardoned of his crimes, which were listed as two accounts of trafficking as well as an outstanding warrant for an assault two years prior in a bar in Oslo, Norway. 
Too Long Didn't Read, My Cousin's Stepbrother, a gang affiliate in Sweden, saved a police officer's life instead of escaping. Man, this is my favorite. Sometimes it really pays to scroll to the bottom of a long thread. Once around noon, I was hanging out at a skate shop when a blood just walked in and started complaining about how all the clothes are blue and how there wasn't enough red. The guy working, who's super cool, just said they would restock, and he left. Later that day, towards 9 p.m., my friend, 15, and I, 14, were at our local skate park, it can get sketchy, when a cop rolled by the nearby basketball court. Afraid of whatever a cop might find on them, everyone flooded out and into the skate park. My friend and I didn't see any of this happening and checked a text on his new iPhone. All of a sudden, three guys in their early 20s asked him to let them see his phone to call someone, take it and run. When he said no, they started to corner him and throw punches. All of a sudden, the same blood from the skate shop was smoking a joint on a nearby bench, ran in calling them all peas for jumping a kid and promptly beat the crap out of them. After they all ran away, he kindly gave my friend five bucks for his troubles. Too long didn't read, nice butt blood helps my friend from getting robbed and gave him five bucks. Partially relevant, there's a flooded quarry about 30 minutes from my house and around it is a campground that the bikers own. The cops don't frick with the bikers at all, so they just let us chill on their property, drink as much as we want, blaze as much as we want, and swim all for only $5 a day. It's very kind of them. Fun fact, you're probably swimming in a quarry with a bunch of bodies in it. I was at a gas station one day and pulled up to the pump, got out and realized that I wasn't close enough to the pump, new car. So I got in, pulled up farther, got out and locked my door, leaving the car on, keys in the ignition, and my then six-month-old baby in the car. She thought it was hilarious. I called my insurance company, I have roadside assistance through them, and they were planning on taking two hours. I called the cops, who said they could not help me. Then this guy walks up, sees me in near hysteria, and says he will call his friend to come down with a Slim Jim. It occurred to me as he called his subordinate and commanded him to arrive within the next two minutes that this dude was some kind of gang member with significant rank. I ignored their need for a Slim Jim as they broke into my car, freeing my still-content child and allowing me to make it to work on time. Too long didn't read. I have AAA now. I especially like the too long didn't read on this one. Oh, another one. I was 19 and stranded in North Miami. I just locked my keys in my car in a rather unpopulated and shady area. I am slash was a blonde, blue-eyed, extremely white girl, and being as I had not intended to stop in North Miami to begin with, I was just wearing a bikini top and a miniskirt. There was a gang of Hispanic youth in the parking lot of an abandoned warehouse across the street from me just watching me. This was long before cell phones and such. I took a chance and just put on my most confident face and walked over to them and asked if anyone knew how to break into a car and could they help me. They all looked at each other for a second. You could tell they were thinking over all the possibilities. Then one of them shook his head and just walked over to my car and popped my lock with his pocket knife and a piece of wire he found on the ground. Had a similar experience when I was in high school. A news crew was visiting the school and they locked their keys in the van. They ended up asking a couple of kids who looked like they could have been gang members, they were, if they could get it open, and they did. Personally, I hate seeing motorcycle clubs described as gangs. There are many different clubs, lots of different missions and ethics. Honestly, though, besides the they are doing it to get brownie points to do their bad things mentality, there are lots of people that have been affected in a positive way by clubs. I was in one full-patched member for over a year. No, it was not the Outlaws, as my username alludes. That's only a playful take on an old nickname of mine. The club I rode with was a national club and was territorial. I can say from experience, we put a lot of work into Christmas toy drives, food pantries, and church, real church, contributions. Local church helped as a homeless shelter and drug rehab with counseling. I can tell you that not the biggest, meanest dude in that club didn't have a tear in their eye watching a five-year-old boy or girl open a gift they would have never gotten from their parents. Nor did they miss seeing their eyes light up when the doors to the clubhouse were opened and there was a full Thanksgiving meal on spread. The first of many for a lot of those kids. Aside from the gang-related activities, club folks are human, they have hearts, some bigger than ours, but they are there. I don't even have much to add to this, aside from, I kind of want to join a motorcycle club now. I just need to get a motorcycle. I live right next to a Hex Angel house kind of thing. It's like their clubhouse, anyways. I've always really liked motorcycles, and when I was little, I asked my grandpa if I could go see theirs. 
So we walked over there and I asked this big brute of a man if I could see the Harleys and without skipping a beat, he hoisted me up, sat me in front of him, put the key in the ignition and started going in circles through the parking lot. I was having a grand old time, and I still visit there to say hi to the guys every month or so. They let me have a shot of Jack sometimes. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.